Pop Culture Pastor. I know it was you, Maureen. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. Cody, what's up? Um, so I messaged you after you asked me about had I watched Justified. Mm-hmm. And you you had a quote about Maureen, and I'm like, she's literally like flipping it and reversing it without calling Missy Elliott. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that one. No, no. But I was, it had to be someone on the yes, course. I just didn't think, I mean, like, look, Maureen had been leading, by the way, this is pop culture pastor. <laughs> Watch alongs. We're watching justified city prime evil. And the penultimate episode is the one where they hit us with a twist. Surprise. M night. It's Maureen. Maureen. Like what is going on here? We find out. Cause Braylon has the gun, bro. He has the gun. Things are good. Looks like, uh, looks like Clement is finally going to have to answer for some things. And Raylan gives the gun to Maureen Downey, played by actress Marin Ireland. Wonderful, by the way. She performed it great. And you're thinking, all right, now they've got him. They've got the murder weapon. And next thing you know, Raylan shows up after, by the way, guaranteeing Sandy that they've got him. Poor Sandy. She's like, he's like asking her to flip, basically, and telling her we got the murder weapon. You testify and this is over. She basically tells him, there's no way I am testifying. (laughs) Sandy's great in this episode, by the way. Oh, yeah. We'll get back to Adelaide Clements, who plays Sandy. Let's let's stick with Maureen. Raylan gives the Detroit PD the gun, the murder weapon that was given to him by Sweetie's friend, Trinnell. And who still has a sweet mustache. Yeah. And she promptly uses it to frame up a different dude. I wasn't here for it. Oh, as it was happening, I'm like, what is happening right now? I'm like literally talking to the TV screen. Like, what's going on right now? What is happening? Are they showing us like her trying to make someone else confess to a different crime? Yeah. Is and, she working multiple cases? That was my hope. And as the realization drops and he finally talks with her out in the walkway and like, I, I think I just had my hands on my head like, oh my goodness, this cannot be happening. And that must be what was going on inside the, the brain of Raylan Givens. Like what in the world? You, you've gone through this whole thing and he's finding out that the, the, the Detroit justice situation is like a maze. It, it, he probably it's an interesting juxtaposition, right? Because Raylan is from Kentucky. He's from the Hollers, right? And it's like, look, look, it's it's justice is simple there. For the most part, like there's good guys and there's bad guys. And that's there's really no in between. But like in the Detroit PD, you find like this whole like where they've had to, to where they've had to make sacrifices to get the job done. And so, like, and and Marine, maybe Marine's name's in Judge Guy's book. Maybe it's not. We don't know that for sure. The accusations made, it seems pretty probable that she is. But because of something Detective Brill says. Now, Detective Brill comes through, right? He gets the gun back to Raylan, unbeknownst to Maureen. And he says this. Look, a quarter of these guys cool in their jets, waiting for sentencing up in Wayne County. They didn't do what they're being tried and convicted for, but they did other stuff that they got away with. Now, I'm okay with that. And even them, deep, deep down, they know why they're there. Does that make me, he says a bad word, we're going to say bad guy? Maybe, but I never sent some poor, de- poor devil up the river I know didn't do it just to get a win. Oh, snap! And then all of a sudden you're like, Brill's back, baby. You're <laughs> back on my in my good book. Um who saw this moral ethical dilemma play out with him being on probably the good side? Yeah. So let's I mean, let's let's dig into that for a second because I think if we're if if you're locking us down and you're saying, Well, is Maureen a good cop, a bad cop? Like, what is it? And it's like 
I think probably she's just in a position where she's gotten locked in, right? Mm. Because Detroit, what, what we've learned from Wendell, Detective Wendell, and from Braille now, is that this is tricky. This isn't just straight up or straight down. Like, this is a winding road that you have to navigate. And I think the question is this, Cody. Is justice 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 if it's indirect? Is justice justice if it's indirect? Like, if you have to take an indirect way to get there. I would argue no, but that would be me. Yeah, well, I mean, surely if we're talking, like, again... Biblical justice, or are we talking about like like a deeper justice, or are we talking like, you know, the justice system in our country? I still think that justice only gets carried out if, like, the motivation is an honorable one. Like, oh, you killed someone? Okay, now you're arrested. Justice. Like, you actually arrest them for the crime that they've committed, not just, like... Oh, this guy had a speeding ticket, and now we're planning all Clement's crimes on you. Yeah, but this is like, okay, so this isn't just TV show stuff. Al Capone. Al Capone, like famous gangster, was a bootlegger during the time of Prohibition, killed, like many, many people get killed on the orders of Al Capone and even by his own hands. And you know how they lock him up? Tax evasion. Tax evasion. They lock him up on tax evasion, which is largely like, look, if we're being fair, like it's trumped up. They did some work to make that stick and to make it bad enough to they could put him behind bars. And it's so so our justice system does this a lot. Mm. But it's just interesting to me that he's caught up in this like thing. I mean, the name of the show is Justified. That's literally the name of the show. And we're we're messing around with this idea of justice. And the Detroit PD is just chaos. Is the Detroit PD just as chaotic in nature as Clement Manziel himself? Mm, no. They're chaotic good. And Clement most is part. And Clement is chaotic bad. For the most part. Um, so if you go back several seasons in the original series, like the only time we kind of get, well, there's a couple times we kind of get this, uh, when the Bennett family is Raylan's number one target. Cause one of them is a sheriff. I miss the Bennett's Bennett's are fun. Um, and so like, but you know, who is doing all the bad and it's not really hidden. It's out in the open that like, Oh, the Bennett's run the show. And, like, no one can take down the Bennets because they are um, the the right hand of the law. And but and then, like, later on, there's stuff with the railroad. And we all know they're fascist. But that's neither here nor there. That's from the Barbie movie. <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, in this show, it, it, there's a lot of sleight of hand if you will, that like you don't see what's going on with each person and you think, oh, this loud, boisterous cop's clearly a bad dude. And not necessarily, oh, this nice lady that lets Raylan stay in his ha- in her house must be a sweetheart. And not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, I suppose, that she's in Judge Guy's book. Because it makes then some other things start to make sense. Um, why why she had this girl? Remember, she's the one who placed the girl with the judge, right? Remember, yes. she, that girl's undercover. Girls undercover. Um, we also have uh, the prosecutor. Like she definitely has some leverage when mm. they're negotiating that because the prosecutor tries to call her bluff and she calls it right back, and it's like. Ooh. Yeah. Anyways, there's a couple stunning twists. Early, I mean, like in the first half of this episode, the first one, of course, with Maureen, who's making her power play, uh, basically saying, well, I don't really care about Clement. We're just going to get a win. And then Brill saying, oh, no, I'm de- I don't play that. The guy we hated all along. Hate is a strong word. The guy we've been annoyed with all along. <laughs> exactly. He saves the day. We're, we still got a shot. 
at that point in the episode. But uh, let's move on because then the chase begins. We've got a lot of stuff with with Sandy. Poor Sandy, this episode. She has herself in a pickle. This seems to be the episode where Sandy figures out the um, the deadliness of the situation she's in. And it kind of drops on her. Like, did you feel like that kind of drops on her when she goes to visit Skinder? Um, well, it was about time the Albanians made a comeback into yeah. the show. <laughs> Honestly, the Albanians, um, right. Almost forgot about them. Yeah. And at that point, she goes to visit Skinder. And I'm like, oh, Skinder. Hey, remember that guy? Because we didn't know what was going on. And she goes to visit him in like what seems like a very desperate kind of maneuver on her part to be like, maybe, just maybe he'll take me back if I say I really cared about you all along. And it was him. He made me do it. And like for Skender's part, dude, the wicked turn he has where he seems like he's listening to her for a while. I mean, like a good minute. And then, like, just kind of turns it off, and his smile goes away. He's got, like, this kind of smirk through most of it. And then it goes away, and he just looks at her and says, you're a dead woman. He was like the Gap band. He dropped a bomb on oh, her. You felt the dread in, in that when he says it, too. Mm-hmm. And, and she basically runs out of that hospital. Like, she gets really nervous. That's when she goes home, starts packing up, getting ready to leave, which, unfortunately, is interrupted by Clement himself. Sandy, for her part, does a lot of like verbal maneuvering in here, like changing the subject. He's like asking her pointed questions and she's like, oh, but you didn't tell me this. Why would you do that to me? You know, like really expert arguing maneuvers. Why haven't I gotten to listen to you? (laughs) Sing. How come you didn't trust me enough to let me listen to your stuff? I mean, really? That's the ultimate question that I had the whole show. That is expert level dodging right there. <laughs> and Sandy was was really doing some good dodging. Um, but she's in trouble. And uh, she, you know, eventually makes this deal with Raylan, sort of, but she, not really. She was a fool. Yeah. Because, uh, like, if you're in line at the airport... You just hop on that plane. Yeah, she doesn't do either. She doesn't tell Raylan she's in, and she doesn't get on the plane. <sighs> Ridiculous. Yeah. And it all uh, kind of sets up this uh, this Clement Raylan showdown. But first, we should definitely talk about Clement telling Sandy another version of the mom story. And you're like, you made this connection a long time ago with the Joker in the Dark Knight, how he's constantly telling a different story about how he got the scars on his face. And that's exactly what this story is. Although this time, I think we get the truth. I think Sandy gets the truth. Maybe because he even says, well, that's just kind of the trumped up version I tell because. It really was just the tornado that sucked yeah. her up. See, but that's the disclaimer at the end where he thinks I've been too I've been too honest. Maybe. I, I went I went away from chaotic and went 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 to truth. Because I I think it's fair as much as a sociopath can that he does care about Sandy. I think that he really likes her. And if maybe the relationship had kept going strong. She would have gone and listened to that great singing. <laughs> and she likes him. Specifically how funny he is. Raylan's like, why are you still with this dude? Why, why do you stay? And she's like, he's fun. And the way Adelaide Clemens delivers that line, by the way, the actress who plays Sandy, she was, she gets her, this is her episode to shine. She was amazing in this episode. Um, it was at that point, I'm like, Thank goodness you haven't been buddy buddies with Raylan the past few episodes, or you two might be canoodling at some point because this is what usually happens with Raylan. Uh, Clement pays a visit to lawyer Carolyn, and lawyer Carolyn's in a bad place. So we get the story at the beginning of the episode where how she basically meets Sweetie, and I'm like, Sweetie's back. Yeah, man, that just made it hurt more because we see like how he takes Carolyn under his wing. We see his dream about the bar, which is kind of like his dream of going straight, you know, like 
mm. like not having to, to rely on a crim- criminal element. And you can see the hope like in his eyes, which, you know, doggone it. Vondi Curtis Hall, another great actor. This this show is full of great character actors. Give him all the awards. They're doing some work, y'all. And show some props because he's amazing. Even though he looks a little too old to be as young as he's supposed to be in 1988 or whatever year it was. Um, you know, the 80s were a rough time. And <laughs> aged a lot of us. Uh, I will say this. Old people looked older in the 80s. They don't look as old now. Makeup. Like, dude, when you were 45 in 1988, you looked 80. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it was. Routinely now, I'll see someone who's like 92 and, and they look like they're 50. I'm like, they can't be right. That person can't be 92. What happened? Seriously, this is a side topic, but what happened? Where, where have our advances been where old people don't look as old anymore? Like Keith Richards has looked like Methuselah since 1978. <laughs> like seriously. Uh, I don't know if it's the like the genetic stuff we have done with our food or Is it supplements. Or- Is there stuff at GNC that could reverse the aging process? What's <laughs> happening? People are staying more hydrated. Um, maybe. <laughs> There's less smokers. Is it because of Gatorade? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Hydrated? Uh, there is less smoking. Smoking's at an all-time hundred-year low. Look at us. Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, look what we did. We're so amazing. Who, who, who'd have thought it? Who'd have thunk it? Not me. Look at us. <laughs> oh. Uh, anyways, yeah. So he looks a little too old. In 1988, but you're right. People looked older back then. Maybe, maybe Sweetie just hasn't aged today on the outside <laughs> since 1988. Yes. Um, but yeah, that whole thing hurt more because uh, we get to see this little vignette of Sweetie taking in Carolyn, and then we flash forward to him in the body bag, and Carolyn obviously crushed. She's crushed, and like, I think what we see through this episode, like what's happening is. Well, be careful with a woman scorned Mm. because Carolyn is in a desperate situation and she's making some interesting decisions. I don't like them. Like, so when Raylan goes back to talk to her and they end up being, you assume being intimate again. And I'm like, don't do it, Raylan. Don't do it. Don't follow your himbo behavior patterns this time because Carolyn is not in a good place right here. And it's pretty clear that Carolyn's the one who tips off the Albanians. Yeah. Like, okay, let's, we we should say Carolyn faces more stress because Clement shows up, realizes she's the one who's been kind of playing in the middle of this. And he, he knows it. And I thought he was going to kill her. I thought we were going to say bye, say goodbye to Carolyn. Wasn't ready for that one. Why, why do you think he lets her live? I don't understand that. That's, that's what the one thing in this episode I don't really get. Why does Clement not kill lawyer Carolyn? Mm. Knowing that she sold him out. Probably because he knows the connection with her and Raylan and or he knows she's just a really good lawyer. Yeah. It's it's weird because I would have thought what they try to get the point they try to get across with Clement is that he's sociopathic, which is why that's what makes him scary. But he's clearly not a sociopath. He clearly has real feelings for Sandy. And it's clear he has some sort of feeling for Carolyn because when he has feelings, he doesn't kill indiscriminately, right? He kills indiscriminately when he doesn't, have any care or feeling for you at all. Which Looking he, at you, Lonnie. Uh, Lonnie and then poor Dell. Dell walks into it, although it was his apartment. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> he had to go somewhere. It's like, why are you wearing my kimono? Please, Dell, tell me those were not your tidy whities as well. They probably were. They probably were, weren't they? He was wearing another man's underwear, wasn't he? That's what happens <laughs> when you're gone from your apartment for so long. <laughs> 
Where was <laughs> Dell? How are these people camping and squatting in his apartment? Well, for so long. Because she has a relationship with Dell because of the casino. Yeah. Poor Sandy. Uh, Sandy is, you want to be sympathetic for her, but then you remember, oh man, she's fooled a lot of people. A few. She's conned a lot. And Skender, boy, Skender's not, he's, he's past the forgiveness part for Sandy. And then Dell, he doesn't get a chance to get past it because Clement kills him. So Clement kills indiscriminately, but in this episode, we te- we see two specifically. He could have killed Sandy, and he almost, it looked like he was going to kill Carolyn, but he doesn't. And I want to know, what's holding him back? Slash, since he knows that she is playing in the middle of all this stuff legally, and I mean, that goes against her uh, duty as his a lawyer that literally he now has something to hold over her. Like mm. you, yeah, you are about to lose everything, not just the potential judge seat, but your law license degree, everything. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. He's not one to turn, uh, to, to turn down some, some sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Leverage. Leverage. Yes, that's a good one. Um, so, yeah, it kind of all sets up in this meeting at the airport, Radisson. <laughs> yeah. I All I could think of when they're sitting down, so, like, Raylan's sitting across from Clement. I'm like, oh, no, this poor waitress. This poor, <laughs> this poor waitress is going to get caught in a crossfire. And uh, you think the whole, I mean, this is a masterful scene by both actors. And it kind of, uh, they have this back and forth and there's some banter at first where like, they're talking about Sandy a little bit. Clement's like, she's cute, ain't she? She gets stoned too much. Keep telling her to quit smoking and, uh, drink like a normal person. And then Raylan's, Raylan's kind of agreeing. It's like, well, some people, you can't tell them anything. Clement's like, ain't that the truth? So there's this weird kind of like banter, but then it gets down to brass tacks quick because Raylan, and this, this is the part that's really interesting. Raylan sets the gun down, says it's loaded. All you got to do is pick it up. You said you wanted a shootout. Let's do it. And it's really like interesting, kind of very, it's a very Western vibe. You think they're you're, you're about to have a shootout and Clement's like, for the first time, we see Clement wary, like we, like he's trying to figure out Raylan's game. Now, we have some background on this because Raylan talked to the old detective. He did. Remember remember what the old detective said? About he his, sleeps well. About his nemesis. He's like, he, he came over to apologize and to end the beef, basically. And he's in my basement, and he goes to reach for where I know I had a gun, but it turns out he was reaching for something else, but the detective shot him anyways. It was a church key. And, and, and but what does he say? He says, I sleep like a baby. Mm-hmm. And in the same way, he's like the DP, the Detroit PD, right? It's what Brill said. Like, well, it's exactly what Brill said. He's like, look, this dude did enough bad things. He got what he, what he deserved. Who cares if it wasn't in that moment for what, for what I did it for. And, and do we see in this moment, Raylan saying, trying to set that up, like, just take the gun, pick it up. You want to shoot out? Let's shoot out. Let's end this right now. So there's this this is an interesting like there's a western justice thing playing out here where Raylan's trying to set up his own basement situation like just just reach for it and we can end this. I was rooting for it. Whether it was up on the roof you or thought, out in the street or right in the middle of the restaurant. Yeah, I mean I I really thought it was going to happen. I was like, "Oh, they're about to do this. It's about to go down." And then the Albanians out of nowhere. So I knew there was no way it could go down yet. Just because this level of action has to happen in episode eight. I thought I see, I thought there was a chance that the Clement situation could be rectified at the end of this episode. And then episode eight would be him just extricating himself from the Detroit situation, right? Uh but it doesn't. Instead, the Albanians come in and I couldn't I screamed it out. When I was watching, I'm watching it with my wife. I'm like, the Albanians, just like Doc Brown and the Libyans in Back <laughs> to the Future. It's the Libyans. <laughs> uh, but it's the Albanians, and they come in, and they just take him. And I'm like, oh, 
now what's going to happen? Are they gonna, my wife's like, are they going to kill them both? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe. They both seem... The, the interesting thing about Clement and Raylan, though, is you keep seeing like this opposite sides of the same coin type deal where they're both really cool customers, even though they're in a car with gangsters. Yeah. And then they do something really strange. The Albanian leader guy tells the guy to pull over, and I think they're going to shoot him and throw him off the bridge. <laughs> no. He takes the murder weapon. He drops it in the, the river, and you can see the look on Raylan's face of confusion and... And just really downtrodden this, like, oh, man. We could have done this legally. Yeah. And so, like, but why? Okay, why does the Albanian head, how, head of the Albanian mafia throw that murder weapon, the incriminating murder weapon for Clement Manziel, off that? If he kills Clement, it doesn't matter. That weapon doesn't really matter. Why does he do that? Because for him, that murder of the judge and of... The undercover lady didn't matter. It was all about what happened to his nephew. And so he's seeking justice for one thing. He could care less about the other. And he doesn't want Raylan or anyone else to interfere with him serving out justice for the broken leg. See, I think we got another twist coming. I think Carolyn's behind it. I think Carolyn told him to. She's the one who tips off the Albanians. That of their meat time. And I think Carolyn's the one who sends them. And if she says, look, I'll send you to him, but you got to give me something. That murder weapon takes a hike. Why? I, I don't know. So part of me wondered, this is just thinking out loud. What if she wasn't necessarily the one that tipped the Albanians? What if the Albanians captured her? Because clearly at one point in time, they were following her and they're like, you tell us where he is or else. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I don't, I think there's a reason we see her push to her limits this episode. I think there's a reason we start off with that clip of just showing, showing just how, cause we had no idea how close her and sweetie actually were until this episode. This episode tells you exactly why and exactly the relationship and why sweetie's a father figure in her life and to lose him in the bar that he was so proud of, that he showed off, and then to be attacked by Clement. Like, uh, up to this point, she still had kind of like this sense of duty as his lawyer, where she's still kind of going hemming and hawing about, like, I'm, I need to represent him well. But I think all that's gone now. And oh, that, yeah. And now she's got one goal in mind, and that's I'm going to get mine. Yeah, I... So I don't know for sure what the deal is with the, the murder weapon. I still like to think that the Albanian uncle is like, this has nothing to do with anything I'm concerned about. I'm serving justice my way. Mm. But yeah, like honestly, them two in the back seat, it would be like if I don't know the the Riddler or the Penguin or someone had taken both the Joker and Batman. Yeah. And as they were about to have a showdown. Yes. And they're like, well, th what's new? <laughs> yeah. Someone take, so they take advantage of they're in a weak position, both Clement and Raylan, because they're so focused on each other are completely, their defenses are completely down for someone to swoop in from the side and say, you're coming with us. Yeah, and I did like the car ride because uh, the Albanians are, like, giving proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so wacky. It's so wacky. And I honestly, I mean, I have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen, like that this is going to result in some sort of huge, chaotic gunfight. Rooting for it. But I honestly don't know how, what players are still going to be left on the field when all this is done. And like, where, like, look, there's a scenario where Raylan dies at the end of this. We, there's been radio silence as far as like any sort of sequels or another season of this. They have, they have, they have not answered that question and there's nothing planned. Um, could this be the end of Raylan Givens? No. That's my guess. But I also think that... I think that's a safe guess, but that doesn't mean... You're not 100%, though. 
I'm 99.7%. That's too high. But and, and way I, too exact. Come I on. think that there will be another spinoff okay. in the not so distant future because you do need an older Raylan winding I thought, down. I thought we were going to spin off with a different character, like the Detective Brill show. I didn't need it. <laughs> the Skender, the Skender Hot Dog Empire. Um, I'm, I'm really wanting to go back to Crowder's Commandos. Sandy in the Bahamas. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crowder's Commandos would be sweet. Yeah. So I, it sets up a, I mean, a, what's sure to be a pretty wild final episode. Um, and how is Raylan going to extricate himself from this situation? And how are we going to tie up this question about justice? Because that's, uh, I think in the last couple episodes, we've talked about this. Now we're really playing around. They're really playing around with this idea of what is justice? How is the best way we can, uh, we can carry out justice and, is is it important that the punishment fits the crime and that the punishment is for the right crime? So I think that justice in this series, um, if you go to the actual title of this of the series with primeval being in it, mm-hmm. that it's primitive instinct that like an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, whether it is the exact crime that they're being punished for or not. It's well, they're locked up because yeah. that's what they're supposed to be or they're dead because that's what they were supposed to happen. Whether it was by the hands of this person or by the hands of that person. And so, I mean, it's very primitive. Uh, it doesn't try to uh, be, I guess, transparent and like, Oh, look at us. We're altruistic. You can see that justice is perfect here. No, it's not. Do you think do you think Raylan's going to have his detective uh old detective moment? Like do, it, it seems clear we're setting up for one way or the other. So, does does Raylan stick to the Old Testament version of justice that the detective was like, "Hey, I'm going to sleep like a baby." Does does Raylan like let me set up a scenario. In this last episode there's a huge crossfire going on and Raylan has Clement dead to rights and Clement doesn't know it. Do you think Clement would shoot or Raylan would shoot Clement if Clement wasn't even aware that Raylan had him? No. Um I mean, so the way the series, the first series starts off, they're in Miami. Mm-hmm. He's at a dinner table. It's almost, it's almost, almost identical. And he's basically asking the dude to pull his gun or to go with him to be locked up and do hymns and haws. And then finally it's like, I got you, buddy. And then he pulls out his gun and Raylan shoots him. Mm-hmm. Um, the way it ends, Sam Elliott. And uh, Raylan, they have a duel basically in the middle of the road. And Sam shoots the hat off of his head. But Raylan guns him down. So if there's something with Raylan, I think it's there has to be the aspect of this at least has the potential of being a fair fight. It really depends on your skill level if it is going to be fair or not. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think we're heading up for this. I think the whole point of the series has been like what we've seen for most of the series is a different Raylan, a, a grown up Raylan, right? It's about time. He's not so much the gunslinger anymore, but has Detroit, the city primeval, the primitive city. Has it forced him back into the Raylan we we knew and loved? And I think we're going to find that out next episode. I mean, could he still kill Clement? You betcha. But I think there will be like one guy has their guns ready. The other one has their guns ready. And then boom. All right. Let's. It's in the next episode. I was very excited about this episode. Like this, I hadn't been this excited about any of the other episodes while watching it. And this one, boy, I was into it. I was all jacked up on Mount Dew yeah. watching it. So we need to update our probable kill list. Uh, who Who's topping the list of like, who's most likely to not make it out of the next episode for you? 
Um, I mean, it's a toss up between Clement and the uncle of the Albanians. Yeah. I think Clement is definitely the obvious choice, but if you take Clement out, boy, Raylan's definitely on that list, but you don't think he's a very high percentage. I don't. I think there could be a twist like that. And Raylan could be the guy, but I'll say if I can't say Clement, if I have to pick someone else, I'm going to go with Maureen. (laughs) You could go with the justice kill. Like it would make sense for Maureen to get caught in the crossfire and, and catch a stray bullet and everyone to be like, oh, well, real Detroit justice just got her. It was justified. <laughs> um, Sandy, maybe she's gone. Maybe she's in safe place. I, I hope she's flown to the Bahamas. I, I think any member of the Detroit PD falling in this battle would be something. I think, you know, the Albanian head guy could be a good good choice. Because it's some somehow you're going to have to take the Albanians off the table. Otherwise, they ain't stopping. Um, that's what we learned early on with Sandy. Yeah. That they don't stop. They don't stop. So like, you feel like the Albanians are a good chance to not make it out of this next episode, but we'll see what happens. Um, uh, who's the winner of this episode, Cody? Um, this one was tough. I almost went Sandy. Mm-hmm. I'm going Clement. He had some great lines again. And, like his, oh, he just plays a bad guy so well. Boyd Holbrook does, and like his interaction with uh, the guy that actually owns the apartment, the kimono that he's been wearing this whole time, his interactions with Raylan, his interactions with Sandy, his interactions with Carolyn. I mean. Anytime he was interacting, there was brilliance being displayed. Um, Like his heartbreak and disappointment over the painting being sold. (laughs) (laughs) It's a Stanley Garlic. It's a Stanley Garlic. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, he was great. Even in the delivery of the story, the amended story about the death of his mom. um, The whole scene with Raylan. I, I honestly think that he... Is a is an equal foil to Timothy Oliphant's Raylan Givens. So like we could sit here and give the winner of the episode to Timothy Oliphant every week. Because, I could. Because he's that good. But I think Boyd Hallbrook has established himself as like we could say him every week, and that wouldn't be necessarily untrue. So I'm gonna say Adelaide Clemens as Sandy uh wins this episode for me because she's wonderful. She's great in this episode. The whole scene where she's like deflecting with Raylan and then Clement himself where she's she's just deflecting everything. And I'm just like, this is amazing stuff. She plays neurotic and scared and fearful and yet excited mm-hmm. um, very, very well. And I thought she won the episode for me if I'm looking past the two main pillars. Yeah. Who's the loser of the episode? There's only one answer to this question. Maureen. Maureen. Get to Brute. <laughs> I mean, I, I now don't want to see her. Like, I like the actress. I've watched her in a couple of things. Now I'm like, no, I'm done with you. How dare you? Oh, I was so mad. Who do you think you are? I, was, I am. I was like physically shaking. I was so mad. I was like, no. Why? Why? Um. So it. Honestly, it's like the end of the Dark Knight when they find out that Harvey Dent's Two Face. <sighs> you were supposed to be the light, <sighs> and she wasn't, and he wasn't. And Maureen, uh, you were supposed to bring balance to the force, not destroy it. Ah, uh, yes, terrible, terrible. Yeah, so I think that's a unanimous. That might be the first time we've had a unanimous loser. Of the episode. Sorry, Maureen. I'm not sorry. (laughs) Traitor. Brill had to come save the day, and then it didn't matter because the Albanians messed it up. (sighs) They almost got the loser. How many Stetsons out of 10 for this episode? Solid nine. Yep. We agree again. I'm giving it a nine. This was a great episode. I love this episode. This This is everything you want in this kind of show. It had twists, turns, a great one on one, like, dialogue scenes i mean it was just full of chock full of good stuff 
and had the potential and the tease of a duel. Oh. And I was excited. I still think we're going to get a duel. I hope. I hope. This is like, can only, this can only end like every other justified season, right? It will be justified. <laughs> Trademark TM. Uh, what did you guys think? Tell us on the social media post for this. If you don't follow us on Facebook or Twitter, you should look up Pop Culture Pastor and look for the Comic Word Bubble logo. And that's us. If you don't subscribe to the pod, you should hit subscribe on wherever you're listening to this. Uh, could be Apple, Google, uh, or um, what's the other one? Spotify. That's the big one. Also good pods. So follow us on any of those places. Download some more episodes. Catch up on what you missed. And we'll see you next week for the final watch along episode for Justified City Primeval. Take care now. Bye bye then. Adios. Did I ever tell you about my mama? (laughs) About the twister? No. We'll see you later.